Welcome. This is an um, unusual and rather interesting uh, uh, event. I've never done something like this. And I was kind of curious and intrigued by this idea of a senior living community. I'm getting around to the time when I have to think of such a thing. I'm already there, actually, as a person who's going to turn 66 in a few months. I am very, very curious about this idea, and I would like to know a lot more about it as we go along. Um, both of them are going to help me, as well as the rest of the audience, understand what this um, idea actually includes and what are the benefits of it. But to start off, an awkward question. This business of senior living, senior community, send your parents away, it goes with a whole lot of emotional and social baggage. How are you going to work around changing perceptions? And do you see such changing perceptions around you at the moment? Mohit. Uh, thank you. Thank you for asking the question and thank you for asking it up front. Because uh, this inverted comma stigma that is attached with parents and children uh, living separately or parents being left to fend for themselves in what used to be called old age homes. I, and if I may say, movies like the Bhagwan did not help matters. Uh, also. Don't help in <laughs> social matters most of the time. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, so there, there was always this issue and stigma around uh, parents uh, not being supported by children. And that's really as with Again, with due respect, I've already been slightly unkind to, to the Hindi film industry and now to the media. Bad news sells better than good news. And therefore, stories of abandoned parents do more rounds than loved parents. But really, if we were to look at what's happening in India today, uh, parents and children in many, many, many cases are staying separately. And therefore, rather than stay alone and depend on an external ecosystem, uh, it does make a lot of sense for seniors uh, to live in a community which is designed with them in mind. It, it is designed so that they are, can use it efficiently, whether they are 55 or 95, and that the services are designed in order to be able to look after their needs as these change over time. So from that point of view, it does become the, the, the right solution for seniors who are living on their own. I'm not for a moment propagating the idea that seniors and our parents and children living together need to look for this solution. But if parents are living on their own, this is the best solution for them. And what we've seen over the last five years, Ratna, is that what used to be looked at as the no option place to go to is now becoming the preferred option for seniors living on their own. Quite right. I can see that happening around me. Um, definitely. And um, you would know, because this is the 11th senior living community that Columbia Pacific Communities has launched in India. Yes. Uh, and I would love to know more about uh, the kind of uh, communities you have already built, what your experience with that is. And I'm asking with a little bit of a personal uh, interest, because this is an option that I would definitely like to consider. We're coming to Mumbai, but stay tuned for that one. <laughs> uh, so for us, and a lot of you may already know our principles as the Columbia Pacific Group. Uh, these are the same people who were the investors and creators of Columbia Asia Hospitals. The Columbia Pacific Group actually has a four decade, a 40 year legacy in senior living communities. Uh, that's what they have done across the no uh, North America. And what we've done is we've adopted, but more importantly adapted, all the learnings from the four decades over there into the five years that we've been in operation over here. And of the, this is now the 11th community, which we are really, really chuffed to be doing with uh, Embassy as our, as our partners uh, in this. And uh, so the, the 11th one, which is actually our second launch in Bangalore, is yeah probably going to be the most special of them because of its location in Embassy Springs right. and because of the partnership that we have with the Embassy Group. 
that's really interesting because uh, it is a community within a larger community in that sense, isn't it? Absolutely. Like society, I mean, uh, you don't uh, uh, leave the, uh, uh, the seniors out of the business of actual living. And that is a very useful thing, not only for the seniors, but for younger people who, uh, who learn to live with all kinds of ages. But Aditya, I'm very curious why you decided to go into this segment. You look too young to be worried about that, isn't it? I mean, he's younger than my, my sons. And uh, I, I'm kind of curious, why did you uh, choose to focus on a segment like this, as opposed to sort of building, say, nightclubs or casinos? profit in this business and just to give you a sense the senior living uh, market share in India is one percent of the total real estate if you look at a market like the US which is somewhere close to 15 percent if you look at Australia it's somewhere close to six to seven percent so the ability for us even though we're a pretty young population to move from one percent to let's even say five percent to five X that is huge and we see that there's a massive gap in this and um, when we look at embassy springs when you look at our land bank we focus on large-scale integrated townships whether it's offices or residential and we see this as a perfect value add to be part of that township where a senior citizen can be there but also enjoy the larger amenities that a township like embassy springs can have you can have your kids go into the schools. We, we have a large clubhouse. We have other products there that are more fitting for the age groups. Um, so we see a gap pan India. We see the housing market going through a really interesting cycle. There's a lot of pressure on supply, but demand is still really good. I think that's just beneficial for the overall market. And then, then in, on top of that, you see this gap in senior living that no one's really doing. Uh, that's what's attracting us to do this. Well, nobody is doing it on the kind of scale that you are doing it for sure. But this is something that uh, seems to be uh, mushrooming all over the place in smaller uh, units. But when two forces join hands, it re results in the creation of something that sort of shifts the paradigm a little bit, isn't it? And um, I mean, I know for a fact it's the coming together of various energies on a film set that makes a film become what it is. So I'd really like to know more about this joint venture between CPC and uh, uh, your group. And what exactly I, if I were a resident there, could expect from the whole process of living there? Uh, so there are two two parts to the, your question. One is the joint venture itself and how it came together. And really, I, I I doff my cap to the embassy group because at a at a fairly grassroots level, through an exercise initiated by their human resource department, they identified senior living as a vertical that they want to. Uh, add to their portfolio in order to progress the company. And when we partner with any company, and we are doing this across the country from the west to the east, uh, we look for people who have a strategic approach to this. Uh, Aditya has spoken about the numbers, and it is a fact. India, every fifth person in India in 2050 is going to be a senior citizen. Out of the three people sitting on the dais, Aditya is going to be around, so I can understand why he's so interested in that. But uh, the point I'm making is, yes, it's a very big market, but if you see what, what, uh, what the embassy group brings is huge credibility of doing projects on quality and on time, and what we bring is four decades of understanding the design of senior living communities, the marketing and sales of senior living communities, but most importantly, how to manage. So coming to the second part of your question as to what you can expect, what you can expect is never to have to do the things that you have to do. So you have to worry about somebody to keep the home clean. You have to worry about somebody to help you make the food. You won't have to worry about the garden. You have to worry about your mobility and your driver. You have to worry about security. I'm saying you don't have to worry about any of that. And once we liberate you from doing what you have to do, 
you can then do what you want to do. And that's what the Columbia Pacific communities, Siri and Amara, embassy promises that our residents should be able to do what they want to do rather than worrying about the things that they have to do. That's right. That is uh, certainly a very um, uh, alluring idea. And I know that um, since you have got um, 11 such properties already going in India, you have certain insights into the whole business of how these communities run. So it would be nice to know how this spectrum has evolved over the last five years. This, this senior living spectrum, how do you see it evo having evolved and how it will evolve? So over the last five years that we've been here, uh, there are two things that have happened which I'd like all of us to understand. Globalization started about 33 years back, right? Uh, the person who was 30 then is 63 today. That person has lived their life, made their careers in an environment where the economy was booming and today they have reached the age of 60, 65 and they are not done. They still want to live life to the fullest. In the meanwhile, what did they do? They invested in the education of their children gave them the best possible education that money could buy in India or overseas. And having done that, with globalization, came the children flying away as citizens of the world to pursue their careers. So this 65-year person has the resources and the desire to live life to the fullest and is living on their own, not wanting to be dependent on the children, equally not wanting the children to be worried about them. So therefore, what we've seen over the last five years is a huge demand for new projects. And the second thing that happened in the, in the last five years, and public memory is short, is called COVID-19. And that taught people that depending on the external environment is really difficult when, when difficulties hit. So senior living communities being self-contained looked after seniors far better looked after seniors who were living on their own far better than, they, than the others fared outside. So there's been a sea change. Our communities that are already operational have a waiting list. And the ones that we launch like today, there is a huge demand. That's right. <clears throat> In fact, the COVID um, uh, point is a very important point because COVID certainly has shaken up all of us in various ways, all the age groups and all the various segments of society. And uh, we are going to have to rethink how we will approach living uh, as we go ahead. Uh, well, uh, about six years ago, I acted in a movie called Lipstick Under My Burqa, in which I played a woman who, at a much older age, decides to learn how to swim. Just the act of learning how to swim, something she could never do. And I know that there are many such people in among the people I meet on a regular basis, people who have wanted to do something all their lives and just never been able to do it because they were so busy educating children who have now left and gone to make their own way in life. And now they want to discover things about themselves. And that's what I presume you guys are hoping to offer, an idea, uh, an opportunity for independent living. What exactly does that mean to you, this idea of independent living? What are the amenities you're going to offer which make it possible for me to live on my own doing what I please? I'm going to pass that over to Aditya because Siri Namara being situated in Embassy Springs not just has a great facility inside but also outside. Over to you Aditya. So let me talk about why Embassy Springs and this project in particular we are so interested on and we encourage people to come see the site and not just this side of Amara but the larger township. But Embassy Springs, we call it a city. It's 228 acre, it's 288 acres, a 36,000 square foot clubhouse, a CBSC school, um, various different other products between plots, future row houses, another mid-segment apartments is more focused to the general population, premium lakeside apartments. Um, you know, it, it really is something, when you go see the infrastructure and see what we've created there, 
close to the airport. We know North Bangalore is exciting for the growth of the city. Uh, it has a lot of different things, plus a future 30 acres that we can build, which would probably be a combination of retail, commercial, um, a hospital probably. And um, I think that's what makes the, this project more exciting, is that you can have one piece of senior living within a larger um, uh, township. And when you see the landscaping, the architecture that we've done is really incredible. And then when you focus on just this one project itself, which comes with the 20,000 square foot clubhouse, various different amenities, I'll let Mohit touch on. I see this as the perfect place to put any senior, but also have them close proximity within the family. I think as Indians, we do want that closeness. Um, Ratna talked about something that I'm seeing my mom go through now is, you know, she's at the age of 57. She wants to do more things. She spent her whole life working on the kids, sending them off, you know, raising them. And then now she's, she's fed up with the home chores that keep her busy. I think you get to an age where you get tired and you get to a space where you just want to do things that you couldn't do in your youth. And uh, having a larger township, having a larger community, a sense of closeness, but then also a nursing home with you is something magical. And uh, I think uh, it's, it's going to be a unique project. I'll, I'll, I'll let Mohit give you a sense of what the, the tower uh, comes with and what kind of amenities you can expect. Yes, actually, I'm very curious. What kind of a living space is it going to be for seniors? Is it going to be like one on top of the other? Is it going to be individual units? What's it going to be? So, Sireen Amara, and I'll just take a little minute to explain what the Amara part of it is. Amara is actually the, the senior living vertical of embassy, and they have named it, keeping in mind that it means immortal, eternal, graceful, all words that apply to seniors and the legacy that they leave behind. Uh, so Sireen Amara is built, it's 239 homes in two towers. But what's unique about it is that the two towers um, emerge from a 20,000 square foot guest house. To put this in context in real estate terms, normally a developer will, will dedicate between one to two to three percent maximum of the developable area to the clubhouse. That's because the clubhouse is visited on occasion by the residents. The clubhouse of Sirin Amara is the beating heart of the community. We dedicate as much as 9 to 10 percent, so 3 to 6x of the space to creating what we call is the living room of your home. So the idea is that every waking moment is spent with and amongst friends. So there is no loneliness, the number one driver of aging. You are always amongst friends and your friends are always an elevator right away. As people grow older, you will find that the social circle keeps reducing over time. There's a time when we can drive 400 kilometers for a friend's wedding. 36th birthday. <laughs> Not uh, not even not meaning, meaning uh, not even a meaningful, nothing. right? Yeah. 30, that's about eight years after now, so yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is the 36th birthday, you would drive 400 kilometers. You can't do that now. I can't do that now, right? And therefore, my radius has shrunk. The number of people that I can meet keeps shrinking over time. And it is, it is not a, a cliche or it's not wrong when people show an old person with a remote control eight feet away from a television, because that's where life becomes restricted to. The beauty of a senior living community is your friends are your neighbors, your neighbors are your friends, and they're always an elevator right away. So therefore, you come down from your homes into this 20,000, where there are spaces created for 20 people, for 100 people, for 50 people. So whether you want to play Rummy, or you want to watch an IPL match, or you want to have a cocktail session with your friends, everything's possible there is always a place and an opportunity to have fun with friends. And, and there's somebody to help you, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's going to support all your activities and what you want to do. I guess, is that part of the amenities also? So People that, to, um, uh, yeah. to actually assist? So that's, that brings us to a very important part of our, of our 
offering, which is called positive aging. Right. I, I saw that as I was walking in. I saw that little sign saying positive aging. And it's, it's a word, I mean, it's a little phrase which is thrown around quite a lot nowadays. So let's know exactly what you mean by that. Well, positive aging is the core of our brand promise. You see, what you are at 55 and what you will be at 65, normally they say the graph will point downwards in terms of health, right? Having said that, the people who, are running who start running marathons at 70 and 80 are not superstars. They were not blessed with special genes. What you are at 55, you can actually be fitter at 65, and that will depend. Thank you. Uh, I won't need any. Thank you. So what you are at 65 will depend on what you do between 55 and 65. Right? And what we've done is we've identified six pillars that ensure that if we massage those elements of your lifestyle, you will actually be fitter with every passing year. These six pillars are physical health, mental alertness, emotional connect, intellectual awareness, spiritual happiness, all backed with nutrition. Now, if you look after these six elements of your life, you will end up being fitter tomorrow than you are today. All of us have to go, Ratna. And you don't have to worry about your children all the time also. <laughs> ah, that's wonderful. More importantly, they don't have to worry about you either, right? And all of us do so much for our children and we don't want them worrying about us and therefore, positive aging is good for you and is good for all whom you love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And positive aging uh, is, is something that it means more than just a jumla for me because uh, as it happens, you know, I'm doing more work at this age uh, as an actor than I've done when I was younger. I don't know how that uh, came into being, but that's the way it is. And I'm just totally um, delighted that I'm getting these, op uh, these opportunities. So it is not just a jumla. It is something that a lot of people are discovering for themselves. I just did a film in which I, was, uh, I played a woman, just an ordinary woman without any particular uh, training or anything, decides to take a motorbike ride along with some young girls to Khardungla in Leh, the highest motorable road in the world. This is a film called Dhak Dhak, which I'm going to, which will come out soon. And, you know, five years ago, nobody would have thought of an idea like this for a film because nobody imagined that seniors were capable of doing anything apart from Ram Nam Japo or, you know, Jani Ki Tayyari Karo. So this, this change I find absolutely wonderful in our uh, times. And I'm so glad I'm 65 at this time <laughs> rather than earlier. Thank you. This has been a most interesting conversation. Is there anything else you guys would like to add? No, I think we can leave it open for specific questions. Or are we going to do the games and then come back to? No, we do the questions. Okay. So if uh, any of you in the audience would like to ask questions, let's do that now. Siri Namara by Columbia Pacific within Embassy Springs is a purchase product. So there are, there are homes, like I said, and you can buy into the home. The joint venture company that is creating that home consists of the Embassy Group and our promoters, which is Columbia Pacific Group. The services are provided by Columbia Pacific Communities. And in order to avail of those services, you buy a home in the community. Rental will be available from people who bought the homes, You're right? Not from, not from us as the developers. It is indeed. Uh, and if I may just take a minute to answer that, we've just welcomed our first residents at the Virtuoso. Uh, and I think the appreciation over there from time of launch till today has been close to 50%. Unheard of, but it's also because of the fact that, like I mentioned, once a project is ready, uh, the demand just goes through the, air, through the sky because everybody wants to move into a ready to move. Into and so our pricing strategy would be to, I think it's really a great price that we're offering at launch. 
uh, would be fairly limited now and have a lot end back-ended because once you can see the product, once you can see why is this product different from a regular apartment, you see you know, the wheelchair access, you see fit-outs and toilets that's specific for uh, senior citizens and a lot of thought process behind it. I think you will see, uh, we, we know that people will then pay higher for that. So I think we- May I interrupt? So what kind of a unit is each individual unit going to be like? Yeah, so each unit is either one BHK or two BHK or a one plus two BHK. Um, we also have a phase two that we're thinking about how to make it a little bit more premium, but we'll announce that when we can. And um, yeah, I think what I was talking about, the, the fit outs, when I saw the mock-up villa, uh, mock-up unit, that was actually my first time seeing a senior living unit. And you instantly know why this is different, you know, from just how big the doors are, mm. uh, small thought processes in terms of bathrooms, um, bathrooms is a huge one, uh, is really important. And, and, and that brings me back to why we did this JV. This JV is a story of specialization. And when you have a developer who's done building housing and, and office for, for 40 years, you then have a partner who's done senior living specifically for 40 years, and you bring them together. Uh, I mean, we could do this as embassy and maybe on the second, third project figured it out, but the first project's gonna be the masterpiece. And when you go in and, and when customers see the mock-up, you'll understand why. How far is... So it'll be anywhere between a 60 lakh going up to a one and a half crore. When, when will this project be up and ready? So we've already broken ground. We just got our RERA approval um, as of, I think, two weeks ago. And our handover will be somewhere towards the end of next year. End of 25. End of 25, sorry. End of, end of 25. Uh, sorry, I apologize. End of 2026, that's the, that's the number, that's the date that is in the RERA registration, that the project will be complete by December 2026. We are already in 2023, second month, so about those many months into the future. Any <clears throat> other questions anyone else would like to ask? Yeah, and, that, and I would encourage you to go to Embassy Springs to understand it, but that's the beauty of having this project in a larger township is that the other products that are, have already been built are being built and to be planned in Embassy Springs that are perfect products for different types, different age groups. And it is a whole master plan that's integrated. So in terms of shuttle service from the senior living amenity, to a plot or to Embassy Edge, which is our mid-segment product there, um, is all taken care of by, with Embassy Services. So it's truly a city within a city. I mean, just imagine living in an apartment complex which is set on a 2.44 acre land, but having access to and the benefits of 288 acres the roads, the horticulture, the lakes, the water bodies, it's, please do come and have a, uh, have a look at uh, Sidi Namara, situated within Embassy Springs. That's a, that's a very good question because it does uh, concern a lot of people as to what it would be. Uh, so it varies between 12 and a half thousand to 17 and a half thousand per month, right? Uh, and it's for the home. It's for the home. And mostly, mostly our residents are two people, right? Very rarely will we have three people. And normally when we have three people, we find that they will combine a two bedroom and a one bedroom together so that both of both the, the generations or sometimes it's brothers and sisters have the benefit of two master bedrooms with two master bathrooms within the same space. So to answer your question, sir, it's 12 and a half to 17 and a half and a thousand plus the taxes as applicable. But what you need to keep in mind in order to make this uh, contextual is remember all the services that you are already paying for, that our future residents are already paying for to different, different people. 
whether it's the person who comes for sweeping, mopping, dusting, the person who comes to cook, the gardener, the, the driver, the, all of this is covered and normally economies of scale will kick in whereby what you pay at Siri Namara by Columbia Pacific should be less than what you're spending at your current home today, right? That's item number one to keep in mind. And remember, this includes something that you will never have access to where you're living today, which is 24 by 7 paramedical support on property, 24 by 7 presence of an ambulance and an ambulance driver on property, and a visiting doctor available for consultation five days a week. Now, when you add all of this up, you know what you get? What you get and what your children living anywhere else get is peace of mind. Because may God ensure that you never need it. But to know that it is available allows you to sleep peacefully, allows your children to sleep peacefully. And how much do you pay for 100% peace of mind? Much more than 12 and a half thousand. But uh, a, a question just struck me. Ke if I am an independently, um, I mean, if, if I'm wealthy enough to look after myself independently, why would I need a space like this? I mean, I'm getting it all. I know, I guess it's uh, what you have partly answered the question already by saying that everything is available to you on call uh, without your having to rush around to get any of uh, the individual services. But, you know, if I've got a good setup going, why would I give that up and come to you? So I would say the community, you know, and, and you made a good comment, Mohit, on loneliness is the, the fastest killer on, on age. It's true, you know, people who are alone uh, you know, uh, an empty mind's a devil workshop. It's very true. And having a community, being at this age where you don't want to feel that you're, you're putting your, your kids under too much dependency, um, having your own set of friends, um, you know, playing housey, playing cards, doing your hobbies that you like, finding other like-minded individuals who come from different backgrounds, is, is kind of like going to boarding school again. And I think that would be such a great way to have have the last part of your life because when I you know I I finished I went to boarding school myself and I cherish those memories and I would be excited to think that I can relive that again in one of my phases of my life. And I I'll I'll just this is again something that I've learned only after I've joined. They say men have uh, three phases in their career. I'm not going to uh, Brahmacharya and all of that. The three phases in a man's career, and it, if, I, if it sounds sexist, please do excuse me. Uh, in a man's career is when you're studying, and then when you're working, and then you're not working, right? Uh, this could apply also to uh, women as well. But in India, they say women have four phases in their life. When you're studying, when you're working stroke married, when you're no longer working and there is a fourth stage which is called when you're not when your spouse is no longer there right now when th this hit home to me one and a half years back when i lost my father and my mom was left all on her own at the age of 78 and when i was talking to our our head of wellness she said you know nobody realizes this but the average life expectancy of an indian woman is six years more than the average Indian man. Also, the average Indian wife is six years younger than the man, which means there is a good 12 years of life post the man passing away, right? Now, you were making the point you're well to do, thank God, and more strength to you, and you can have the person who to look after the home, the garden, the car, and the security at your beck and call. But if you were staying, the point Aditya made, if you were staying at Siri Namara, you would go for a walk with a set of friends, you would have breakfast with another set of friends, you would play bridge with a third set of friends, you will discuss politics or gossip with a fourth set of friends, and then you might have a chota wala in the evening with a fifth set of friends. How many of these could you pay to get over to your home daily? Point me. 
Right. And that's the joy of living in a community. Yes, and the boarding school analogy is a good one because there was a time when there was that terrible stigma about boarding school. Mummy and daddy don't love you, that's why they send you away to boarding school. That definitely has changed as time goes Does by. Does Bobby huh? remind you of that? Bobby. Bobby, the movie where Rishi Kapoor yeah, yeah, got yeah, sent. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's what um, uh, one hears over and over again. That's oh, right. he's gone to boarding school. That means, oh God, parents don't like him enough or her enough. Mm. So this problem is. And uh, like our attitude has changed towards boarding schools and the need for young people to live together and study together and learn together, I guess it's time for us to change our minds about how older people can and should live the way they want for as long as they want in the most salubrious of surroundings. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you to you, I, If there's no other questions, then maybe we can move on to the next part of the event. Any other questions? Questions from all of on, you? on Siri Namara specifically, please do ask. Great. It seems you've handled it so well that all the information's gone out. Yes, absolutely. And your answers have been extremely um, detailed and uh, hopefully convincing. So, thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming.